Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Science Week Live in this beautiful studio. I'm Neve, and I'm going to be joined today and Wednesday and Friday with some awesome transition year students. I've been working with these people for the last couple of months. I've been trying to find out where does science fit in their lives. And they went away and they made science reports and they picked people that they wanted to talk to. And they want to share to you with you today about where science matters to them and uh, and some of the interesting things that they're particularly involved in in that regard. So we have a really, really, really packed show. It's just 30 minutes. We want to hear from you because they've made this show in order for you to uh, tell them what you like as well as a transition year students and other people in school. So 30 minutes, not much time to do it. Today, I'm working with the students from St. Louis Secondary School in Dundalk, my old school, would you believe? And uh, yeah, I think we better just get going, hadn't we? So uh, before we start, let's just see what it's like to actually be a student at St. Louis. Hi, we're students from St. Louis, and this is our school. This is our school. It was founded in 1950, when it used to be a boarding school. It's now just a day school with around 600 Inside pupils. In the school, we have a 15th century castle, which used to facilitate lessons and classes. This is our school logo with our motto, Ut sind unum, Dieu le veut, meaning that all may be one and God wills it. The coat of arms represents the kings of France, where the OG sisters of St. Louis came from, and the bond of Christian charity. Our current uniform is a long plaid green skirt, a green jumper, wide open neck shirt, and green socks. However, ties used to be part of our uniform. This is the music corridor, a corridor on the second floor with pianos and guitars for lessons and or for people to practice. It leads to a balcony which overlooks the chapel hall. Our technology room and the art, science and home economic rooms. This is our canteen, which spreads the message of healthy eating and the importance of eating by offering free breakfast. Our gym is where we share most of our school spirit through playing, watching and supporting our teams with the Louis War, which is how we support each other. And here they are, the amazing transition year students from St. Louis Secondary School in Dundalk. Hello, you're really welcome. It's lovely to see you. How are things? You good? You keep them well? Great. Okay. Well, I know who you are, but obviously people out there don't know who you are. So why don't you introduce yourselves? Camelia, you start. Hi, I'm Camelia. I'm 15 and I like playing basketball. Lovely. Isabel. Hi, I'm Isabel. I'm 15 and I like music. Lovely. Ellie. Hi, I'm Ali. I'm 15 and I like reading. Lovely. Ava. Hi, I'm Ava. I'm 15 and I like to play Gaelic. Circa. Hi, I'm Circa. I'm 16 and I like to dance. And Kaylee. Hi, my name's Kaylee. I'm 15 and I like horse riding. Brilliant. So we're here. We've been working together for a couple of months now, haven't we? We've been talking about science a lot over the last couple of weeks. And you've taken that and you've made movies and you've pe collected people to interview. So, so let's go through what can we expect in the show today. Camelia. Thanks, Neve. Some of us here made a science report about space telescopes such as the James Webb Telescope, the Hubble and the ILO-4, which is an Irish-based telescope. Great, I look forward to that. And uh, Isabel, what else? Uh, we also interviewed Jeff Hoffman, an ex-NASA astronaut, an astrophysicist and current MIT professor. Is he connected with your report about the telescopes in any way? Uh, yeah, he actually went up in space to fix the Hubble. Wow, my God, I'm looking forward to that interview. <laughs> Great, thanks Isabel. Ellie, what else is happening? Uh, we took a look at the Science Week activities and then we're going to interview Aoife Raleigh who has a show called Strong Women. Oh, Great, that sounds good. Yeah, it's good to talk about Science Week because of course it is Science Week. Mm -hmm. Ava. Uh, we're going what to else? Be looking at a report on how to kick a Gaelic football kick... or just any football. Very good. The science is very good. Circa, what else? For anyone with any questions or anything to make sure to put them in the comment box. Yeah, we're going to be looking at them at the end. Yeah. And Kaylee, anything else? Um, we're going to be interviewing Dundalk FC player Brian Gartland. Wow, that's a lot. We have a lot to get through and we want to hear from you. So don't forget, tell us where you are, what you're doing today. It's all for you today in the YouTube channel. So. We better get cracking, had we? We've uh, we've a lot to get through. So so let's look at this science report, which is all about three telescopes, the three telescopes that um, our groups looked at. Take a look. Hi, welcome to our video about space telescopes. The Hubble. What is the Hubble? The Hubble is a large solar-powered telescope that was launched to orbit outer space on April twenty fourth, nineteen ninety. The Hubble takes very detailed pictures of planets, stars, and galaxies from up to even billions of light years away from Earth. The Hubble orbits about 535 kilometers above Earth and travels around 5 miles per second. The telescope orbits the Earth around 15 times every single day. 
What makes the Hubble different from telescopes we use on Earth? Well, the Earth's atmosphere alters and blocks the light that comes from space. The Hubble orbits above the Earth's atmosphere, which gives it a better view of the universe than telescopes have at ground level. The Hubble uses a digital camera to take pictures and uses radio waves to send the pictures through the air back to Earth. The Webb Telescope, also known as the James Webb Space Telescope, or JWST, is a space-based observatory with the aim to observe the early formation of galaxies, planets, and stars after the Big Bang. It can observe as far as 100 million years after the Big Bang. For comparison, the universe is 13.8 billion years old. To do this, it uses infrared wavelength observation methods that detect heat radiation, but therefore the telescope itself must stay very cold at around negative 223 degrees Celsius. It also has a shade to protect it from the sun. It's roughly the size of a tennis court. There are also other technological feats that the web features, like its primary mirror, which is six times the size of the Hubble's, but only half the weight. And it's covered in gold, so it's optimized for infrared light. Well, it is a very thin layer of gold, the total mass of the gold used is around half the mass of a golf ball. It was launched on Christmas 2021 and now orbits the Earth at a bigger distance than the Moon does and is at the beginning of its around 10-year-long mission. The James Webb Telescope is named after James Edward Webb, NASA's second administrator. Webb is best known for leading Apollo, a series of lunar exploration programs that landed the first humans on the Moon. However, he also initiated a vigorous space science program that was responsible for more than 75 launches during his time, including America's first interplanetary explorers. Webb supported science behind the scenes as well. Shortly after assuming the job vacated by Keith Glennon, Webb enhanced the role of scientists in key ways. He gave them greater control in the selection process of science missions and he created the NASA University Program, which established grants for space research, funded the construction of new laboratories and universities, and provided fellowships for graduate students. The Low Frequency Array, or LOFAR, is a large radio telescope with an antenna network located mainly in the Netherlands and spreading across seven other European countries as of 2019. Originally designed and built by Astron, the Netherlands Institute for Radio Astronomy. It was first opened by Queen Beatrix of the Netherlands in 2010 and has since been operated on behalf of the International Low Far Telescope by Astron. Low Far is currently the largest radio telescope operating at the lowest frequencies that can be observed from Earth. Unlike a single disk telescope, Low Far is a multi purpose sensor network with an innovative computer and network infrastructure that can handle extremely large data volumes. The revolutionary multi-beaming capabilities of the telescope allow astronomers to engage in multiple lines of research, such as they can look back billions of years, they can survey vast areas of low-frequency radio sky, and they can also be on the lookout for radio transients originating from the most energetic explosions in the universe. That's it for now. We hope you enjoyed our video and learned a lot about the telescopes. Bye! That was terrific. Wow, that was quite a whistle-stop tour of three of the best telescopes ever. What was it like to put that together then, Camelia? Oh, uh, it was definitely very fun because we use an app called Flip a Clip and some of us had like a lot to do. So like some of us had to draw 800 slides by hand. No way. Yeah. How long did it take? <laughs> definitely like a long time, like two evenings each per wow, person. fair play to you. It came together beautifully. So um, was it hard to research all that, um, Isabel? Um, it wasn't too bad, especially with the ILO far, since it's a local telescope. Yeah. There's quite a lot to know about it here. Yeah. Are you are you naturally interested in Camellia? Obviously, I am. But like, are you? <laughs> uh, I would say so because I do want a future career in STEM. Ah, in yeah. in space or something else? Um, like in medicine. Like I want to be a pediatrician. Oh, and where does that come from? Uh, just like seeing my two brothers being born is I don't know. I just really like the way that it just all went. To be oh. honest. Did you actually see your two brothers being born? Uh, yeah. That's amazing! <laughs> wow. And that inspired you to yeah. decide you're going to get into pediatrics. That is brilliant. Well, you know, I'm, I'm sure you will. And I wish every success with that. So then, what about you then? Are you a space nut like me? <laughs> I actually am. I want to become an astrophysicist in the future. My so. kind of girl. <laughs> my kind of girl. So how are you going to do that? How's the, what's the plan, Isabel? Um, the plan is after I finish uh, my 
German Leaving Cert, the Abitur. Oh yeah, let's stop there. What does that mean? <laughs> so you're not a, an ongoing pupil at St. Louis, no? No, I'm going back to Germany in March. I was just here for the few months. Have you enjoyed it? Oh yes, definitely. Okay, are you, you've, I mean, your accent, you must have some Irish connections there. Yeah, you? both my parents are Irish. Okay, yeah, because yeah. I don't hear the German at all. So the Irish, so the German equivalent of the Leaving Cert is the Abitur. Yes. So then what happens for you? And then I'll probably go to university and study physics and astrophysics. Very good, yeah. yeah. Well, maybe you might be up in, in space <laughs> one day. So, so um, in relation to this then, um, a couple of you then uh, in the team that made that video, you got to interview somebody really interesting. Tell us a little bit about who you interviewed. Um, so it's Professor Jeff Hoffman, mm -hmm. and he was up in space fixing the Hubble. And yeah, we interviewed him. It was really interesting. Oh, that sounds fantastic. Okay, well, let's let's take a look at that. It was pre-recorded, of course, because he's he's in America. So let's see how you got on. Yeah. Um, so what was the issue that you were trying to repair on the Hubble, and how did you well, fix the, it? Well, the work? issue that everyone knew about was that the uh, Hubble Space Telescope could not focus properly. It it uh, had what we call spherical aberration which means the primary mirror was not quite the right shape. It was a little bit too flat. Uh, how much? It, by about one micron, okay? The, the outer part was, they took away about one to two microns too much glass when they were polishing the mirror. And of course, we fixed it, and Hubble has gone on to uh, rewrite astronomy books many, many times over. What was your highlight of your career in space? Well, I would have to say, I mean, I started life as an astronomer. So as both as an astronomer and an astronaut, I mean, to put my two hands on the Hubble Space Telescope yeah. and actually fix it. Um, I mean, I knew how important it was to the astronomy community, not just to NASA. People who didn't live through that era don't remember what an absolute disaster it was after they discovered that Hubble couldn't focus properly after you know, people knew that it had cost over a billion dollars and, and people had such high hopes for it. So, yeah, to be able to actually fix that and then see the incredible results that came back after Hubble was working properly, finally, that, that's that been a great source of satisfaction. Yeah, that must have been amazing. And um, we understand that when you were on the space shuttle, you experienced a solar storm. Can you tell us what well, that was like? A solar storm is just charged particles coming at you. You don't see anything. So it, it's not it was like anything. We just got a, a, a somewhat higher dose of radiation. The one, the one thing that, that you do see um, at night when you're sort of lying in your sleeping or floating in your sleeping bag and your eyes are closed and you're dark adapted, when charged particles go through your head, they cause flashes of light. And at one particular part in our orbit, and especially after solar activity, uh, when you're flying over part of the South Atlantic Ocean, you go into what they call the South Atlantic anomaly, where there's a lot more charged particles. And boy, it was like fireworks going on inside my head. It was beautiful, actually. Of course, I knew that was charged particles, which... Yeah, there's nothing we could do about it, but uh, and I survived, obviously, but it's quite a light show. Do you have any advice for people of our generation wanting to pursue like, a similar well, career? Well, you have to remember, uh, if you want to get involved in, in space, there's other things besides just being an astronaut. And, I, you know, to be an astronaut is a great dream. I, I talk to students all the time who would love to be astronauts, and it's great. I encourage that. It, but the most important thing, you know, at your age as students is, you know, learn as much as you can, uh, do really well in school, uh, get into a good university, um, you know, study technical subjects. Obviously, I mean, you want to be comfortable with computers, you, you know, laboratory experience, being able to, to work with your hands, fix things, uh, do experiments, because astronauts do a lot of that. Be patient. Uh, the space world is changing. Maybe you don't have to work for NASA or the European Space Agency anymore. There's, there's going to be a lot more uh, ways to get into space. And, uh, you know, who knows? Um, NASA has, I think, 17,000 people work at NASA. I don't know how many people work at the European Space Agency. 
but only a very small number are astronauts. But everybody who's involved in, for instance, the current pro Artemis program of going back to the moon, you know, they all feel that they're part of it, e even if they're not going themselves. And, and it was the same thing back in the Apollo program. But work hard, um, uh, don't give up, and, and uh, you know, who knows where we're that will get you. So good luck to you all. And uh, it's been a pleasure talking with you. Thank, Thank you so you much. much. Thank Bye -bye. you for your time. Can you believe you were speaking with an astronaut? What was that like? Well, I, didn't, I was watching, but it was really cool to just hear him talk about his experiences because yeah. it's not every day you hear an astronaut speak about space. No. What about you as somebody who loves space? What was it like, Isabel? Oh, it was amazing, especially it was the first time talking to like an astronaut like that. So it's an amazing experience. Yeah. And he's kind of royalty as well because like, he physically was touching the Hubble Space Telescope, which we all love anyway, whilst being on a spacewalk and looking down on Earth. That's incredible, mm -hmm. isn't it? And you got to interview him and you did an awesome job of it. <laughs> well done to both of you. So, um, Ellie, uh, you know, I know from Isabel that she's obviously a space nut. What about you? Are you into space? Um, I'm interested in it, but like not as a career, just okay. kind of a hobby, yeah. I guess. Yeah. So what's your, what, where does science kind of situate for you? Because this is what the show is about, is where does science, where is science relevant for TYs? What about you? Well, I feel like it's relevant in like everyone's life because, you know, gravity is science technically. <laughs> Obviously, <yeah. laughs> and like medicine and stuff yeah. like that. So it's very important. So And, and for your future, what, what do you want to do then? Well, I want to be a journalist. Yeah. But <laughs> You're doing a great job here. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. So. But, but it's great that you have some place for, for science in your life. So that's yes. good. That's good. Okay, well, thanks very much. You better keep going. Um, <laughs> okay, so in addition to these amazing TYs, um, the St. Louis Secondary School also got involved and they have put together some brain teaser questions. And uh, here is the very first one. Listen hard. It comes in fast. You're going to hear it just once. So let's hear it. How much do all the people on the earth weigh? Oh, how much do all the people on the earth weigh, right? And don't forget, we're coming live here on YouTube on the SFI Discover channel. We want to hear from you. We are making this show for you. So where are you? What do you think of the show? What questions do you have for these amazing students that I've been, uh, that I've been talking to today? So, and speaking of amazing students, Circa. Hello, how are you? Hello, good. What are we talking about, Circa? Loud Festival. The Loud Science Festival. Very first year this year, we have yeah. an official Loud Science Festival. And as fellow inhabitants of Loud, that is good. So what's been going on for the Loud Science Festival? Uh, there was an agricultural dig mm -hmm. last week and you did a talk last Saturday. I may have done a talk or two, that's right. And there's like stuff in it for school, like there's visits from the Air Corps yeah. and Circus 250. Yeah, did you? Were, did we you got a visit, yeah, from okay. the Army last week. What was that like then? It was very good, yeah. yeah. Um, they told us like their experience and okay. how to get into the army and like different roles of the army. And very, very good. It was yeah. good, yeah. Very good. Uh, did it make you want to? Not know? really, no, but it would, if you were interested, it would get you a good eye into things. Yeah, very good. And then, so, so you know, I've been asking as, as I've been talking to people, so what about you? Where is science for you? So the Air Corps, or the, I keep it in the Air Corps, the Army Corps came to the Louis. Yeah. So would you have gone to them if they were not? Going? I don't think so, no. Okay, why not? I think of like science now, I feel like it's more just a subject for a lot of people mm. my age. <laughs> I have work to do. Okay, so how can I get you to engage in science? I think if it was more like, if stuff was more interactive. All right. Like if it was like a carnival or something or like stuff at big things, interactive things, like I think it would, you'd learn more because okay. you don't realize that you're actually doing science. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. No, I agree with you. I mean, that's where I am as well. I think I like to make science part of every day, you know, yeah. which is why we, we started this project. So you're saying like a festival, there happens to be science things going yeah. on, but there are other things happening Yeah, as more well. people would go and be aware yeah. of it then. Well, we just have to do that next year, don't we, for science? We have a carnival of science. It'd be amazing. Yeah, because... Thanks very much, Circa. So uh, what's coming up next? We have um, a creator of Super, of Strong Women, mm -hmm. uh, Aoife Raleigh, and we're going to interview her. And are you, her some are you going to interview her? Yeah. In your own studio, I hear. Yeah. Circa's actually uh, the official co-host of the show, and we're kind of in competition. So she says, she claims that she's going to make the next <laughs> slot even more fun than my slot. I'm not so sure. Good luck with that. So you better go. Yeah. And uh, while she's running back to Studio B, our second studio, I want you to hear the answer of our first quiz question. How many, how much would people weigh if they all were weighed together? So let's find out. 
How much do all the people on the earth weigh? If the entire human population was to step on a scale, they would weigh 316 million tons. <laughs> Hello girls. Hi. Hello. So this is live and uh, technically we're not able to speak to the amazing Eve Rally. I met her actually. She is amazing and I saw her show Strong Women. It is absolutely brilliant. You're just going to have to take my word for it. Yeah. So uh, this is your studio. What are we going to do, Sarka? We're just going to interview you instead. What? Okay. And ask you some questions. Okay, so what, are we, what, what kind of questions do you want to know? I mean, you, I was a former pupil, you know. You did a talk last week I in did. the Dundalk Library. I before. did. I did. I did. What was that like? So what I was doing was, you know, I'm a space nut. Um, are you into space? Uh, yes. Uh, yes you're not. No. Yes what do you mean, yes and no? Like, it depends. Some of it's interesting. But some Which bit's interesting? Like, the planets and yeah. people that go to them. Like, yeah. we went to a talk last week, and that was interesting. Yeah, you did. You, it was at... Yeah. Um, Pat was Norris. Pat Norris. So he, he, was, he was involved in the Apollo mission, wasn't he? Yeah. And he's Irish. Yeah. What was that like? It was very good. It was interesting, yeah. Yeah, really good. So you want to know what I did? Okay, so yeah. I was in the Dundalk Library and, um, you know, I'm I'm trying to, you know, I love all things space and I'm trying to be a really good space reporter. So I had an amazing year. Like once COVID ended, I literally like said, right, that's it. I've got to start covering some launches. So I got to go to um, NASA Kennedy and I saw the launch of our European um, Space Agency female astronaut, Samantha Cristoforetti. And then Actually, it's great that we're talking about this because we're about to watch a launch off to the moon of this new rocket, um, a part of the Artemis program, which is launching on Tuesday night, um, Wednesday morning. So I've been following that. So that's what the talk was about. And there was families there and there was um, older people, younger people. And I think there's definitely an appetite for, for space. Yeah. Would you like to ask me, Kaylee? Uh, like, even when you were younger, did you always want to be something to do with space or did anyone inspire you? Or That's was a great always question. Thing? You know what's really interesting? Uh, you know what's really interesting about, about me, though, is that I was interested and then when I went to the Louis, I didn't have the confidence to actually do anything about it um, because there wasn't anybody in Dundalk um, that I saw in my line of sight that was interested in space. So I, I didn't do anything about it. So I came to it really late. In life, but I so you it. didn't find the Louis helped you, or oh, I can't say like, that. <laughs> no, I love the Louis. Like I, I actually yeah, love. But like yeah. they didn't have like no one in like it wasn't in school. Right you, it wasn't in school that you, it, was, it was inspired that you wanted to do something with space. Well, I had a really good physics it was teacher. Yeah, yeah, it was because it came from my house. Like, because dad was mad into space and then it kind of mm. just absorbed into me. But but like, I had a really good physics teacher, Mr. Kelly. I loved it. You know, I absolutely loved it. And I had the tie. You guys don't wear the tie. No. no. It's, it's, it's unbelievable, isn't it? Ellie, what question do you have for me? Um, I think someone told us you wanted to go to space. Yes, that would be true. I do want to go to space. I want, I'm not as an astronaut. I want to go as a kind of, a, just like myself, yeah. you know, just to see, you know, because I'm a a talker obviously yeah. and then um, I love reporting on things so I want to just go like as a reporter just yeah. to see because it is really scary astronauts yeah. don't tell us the half of it like yeah. you know so I would just like to go as like a normal person and go oh my god this is terrifying <laughs> that's what I'd like to do yeah. you know but uh but yeah this was great this is this is your studio is it Circa? Yeah. <laughs> you're in charge of the studio so we better we better go to the next thing so what's the next thing Circa? so next we had other students in our school who did a video on how to kick a football and you were in that video. Uh, yeah, it was myself, Eva, and Anya. We done it, and it, we we tested like what position it, if you kicked your the ball with the inside of your foot or the outside, what like impact it had on the speed or, or where the ball was going. So we'll show you that video is going to be playing now. The best way to kick a ball. Ava swings her leg back to get momentum in the kick. She hits the ball with the inside of her foot to make sure it's on target. The kick in motion continues after a ball has been struck to ensure a smooth control kick. Ava leaned back when kicking the ball and the ball went higher. By leaning back, this means the ball had less power. Ava leans forward while kicking this time. This causes a short kick and it for not to go very high. Ani's body is facing 90 degrees from the target. She then hits the ball with the side of her foot. She follows through with her leg to give it more curl, but not too much as she doesn't want to overdo it. 
Although Anya is still kicking with the side of her foot, she uses way too much follow through on this ball, which makes the ball curl so much more, which means it's completely off target. In conclusion, when you're taking a penalty, you should bring your leg back to get momentum and follow through with the ball just enough so that it has power, but do not lean back or forward. When taking a point, you should face your target 90 degrees with your body and then follow through with the ball, but not too much. Sounds really interesting. So there's a whole maths behind taking a kick. So how do you know this? Are you a sporty person? Yeah, I play Gaelic and two, so do the two other girls I've done this video with. Ah, and so do you think mathematically when you're taking a kick? Um, it depends on the kick you're taking. So if it's a free kick, yeah, you kind of have to, you know, think about it. Yeah. You know, try get it where you want it to go. But if you're, you know, t just taking a shot running up the field, you wouldn't think about it as much because you don't have the time to. And so does it come with experience that you know where your body goes? Like, how do you learn where to place your body if you're not thinking mathematically about it? So it's like... I don't, it's hard to explain what I, you know, having something ahead of me, but if you're on the left side, you just, you need to know where to hit the ball at the bottom or how much power or where you're going to, or if you're going to follow through with your leg or not. And is that just like by trial and error that you just kind of know? Kind of, yeah. It could either go really well. If you think about it too much though, it could go wrong. Yeah, and I'd say nerves and everything in a match and everything. Yeah. The pressure would be on you. So, Ava, I've been asking everybody, where is science in your life? Do you, does it, is, it, is it very present for you or what, what's it like for you? Um, I'm not 100% sure what I want to do when I'm older, but I think these days science can come into a lot of different careers, mm. especially like as we find out more and more, it just comes into more and more things. Yeah. But at the moment, I think uh, I want to be an electrician, so definitely play yeah, a big you role. definitely yeah. with electricity. You have to understand that. Yeah, and, and would you go to a Science Week event outside of school? Like, would you go to one? Um, it depends on how close it would be. It, it's not something I'd be mad into going to, like... OK. But if it was near me, I would go, yeah. All right, that's not bad. Okay, that's not as bad as Circa. I have to completely <laughs> convince her. Right. Okay, well, thanks very much, Ava. We better keep going. And it's time for another brain teaser question. Keep an eye out. This one's fast. True or false? We gain bones as we grow. The answer to this question is false. We are actually born with 300 bones, but it's reduced down to 206 bones as we grow. Now, two fun facts about our body. Did you know our bodies go? This is due to a bioluminescence that the naked eye can't see. Um, did you know that stomachs can melt razors? Um, so although we don't actually consume razors, um, the hydrochloric acid in our stomach is so strong, it can actually melt a razor within a couple of hours. Joining us now, we have Brian Gartland, a player on the Dundalk FC team. We're delighted to have you here talking to us, Brian. We have a few questions we'd like to ask. Uh, so the first question, do you have any strategies when you're going to kick a football? Yeah, when you're going to strike a ball, it will depend on what you want the outcome to be. So as you showed in your video there, if you lean back, the more you strike underneath the ball, the higher it's going to go. So if you lean back too much, you're going to go way up in the air, miss the target. If you strike it with the laces of the front of your foot, you're going to have a more straight, direct um, shot, whereas the inside of the foot, you're able to put a bit of curl on it. Um, and then your body position in terms of, I suppose, the outcome you want. So there's a lot of factors that come into it. Um, but I think when you're playing, you don't think about all those factors. You just, as you're learning, as you're practicing, growing up, you, it becomes sort of natural to you. But um, when you think about it, like you girls have done, there's there's so many factors that come into it. Yeah, thank you. So what would you eat for a big game? Like what sort of nutrition? What like? <clears throat> Our pre-match meal um, at Dundalk we'd have for... The last 10 years now it would be three and a half hours before uh, kickoff of a match and it would contain certain low GI carbohydrates, so it would be a slow release of energy. That would be rice and sweet potato. There would be lots of vegetables and there would be your protein and usually it's chicken fillet. A vegetable based sauce, so um, you've got healthy fats mixed in there as well in terms of what the food's cooked in, and then there might be fruit and rice cakes as a snack after. Uh, what age did you start playing football, and do you think like there's a right age to start playing football? 
I would have started kicking a ball, I think, before I could walk, my mother said. But when I was tiny, I'd be always kicking a football. And I started in a team maybe when I was five years old on the under sevens and played for a couple of years. But um, I don't think there's a, an age of someone. It's sport. It's healthy. It's great for the social aspect of kids, mixing and learning to win, learning to lose, everything that goes with that. So I think uh, at any age, it's it's great for kids to get involved once the environment's the environment's good for them. You played with it, like, were they end on dock or? Um, Apologies, you broke up there. What was the first team you played with? Are they end on dock? My first team would have been Knockline United, um, my local team in Dublin when I was when I was five years old, uh, and then I've had lots and lots of uh, different teams since then around the country. And what advice would you give to a young player looking to go professional? Um, there's, there's four sort of aspects of football. You've your tactical, which is uh, having a good head for learning the game. So you've got to learn positions. There's a lot of different movements, different patterns. There's technical, which is about your quality, being able to play with the ball. Your physical is very prevalent these days in terms of you have to be able to be fit, be strong, be hold your own and then mental. You've got to learn to to take a lot of knocks and learn to fail, learn to lose over and over and over again um, and be able to bounce back. So, uh, But the biggest thing is to enjoy it. Practice hard, practice, work hard and, uh, and always enjoy it because that's why we play sport. Yeah, thanks for that. Thanks for joining us. No. Bye. Uh, we no have problem. one last Thanks, quiz question, so let's see if you can answer it. The Eiffel Tower can go in length during the summer. True or false? True. Where substance is heated, the particles move more, and it takes up a larger amount of volume, especially in bridges and towers, which contain metal, for example, iron. Oh, it's nearly over. Our program's nearly over. I don't want it to end. I want to keep you with me forever. <laughs> <laughs> All right, all we have left to do is see what people have been communicating with us online. And I think we have had a fair few responses. So, Camelia, tell us. Uh, Lucas says, I'm very curious as to why the Artemis launch has been delayed a few times. Could you explain the reasons why? Do you want me to explain the reasons why? <laughs> yeah, Lucas, that's a great question. And um, the reason it's been delayed is that they had a problem filling the main tank in the center, it's it's full of liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen. And once they start filling liquid hydrogen, it was leaking all over the place. So they've had problems with leaks. But they promise that it's all going to be okay. And we have fingers crossed that it will launch on Tuesday night, uh, Wednesday morning. And I will be live streaming it. You can join it on my Instagram page. So it's a shameless plug. What else? What else? Uh, Darren asks, what is our favorite thing about science? So what's your favorite thing about science? Anybody want to answer that? Um, Isabel, what's your favorite thing about science? Um, I think for me personally, being interested in space. Yeah. Um, it's just learning the reasons behind things, yeah. why something works the way it does. I think it's really interesting knowing. Yeah. Uh, what's your most interesting thing about science? As somebody who, who isn't into science, what's the one thing that stands out for you, Circa? How everything works. Like there's science behind literally everything. It's crazy. God. My God, she's amazing. <laughs> Got it. Got it. That's fantastic. Anybody else? What's your favourite thing, Ellie, about science? Um, I guess science is the ability to help other people, yeah, especially sick people. Yeah, that's really good. Do we have anything else? Anybody else? Um, Eva says, what was the best part of being involved in making the show? Now, what was the best part of being involved in making the show? Go on, Eva. Time out of class. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks. That's great. All those hours that I put in. Now. What about you, Kaylee? What was the best thing about it? Like the experience, like... I I wouldn't have been here only for school and yeah. thanks Nee for taking us. Um, okay. Yeah, it was good and we learned stuff. Yeah. We learned stuff like I learned stuff about science and it was whatever we were interested in, like yeah. the ball, kicking the ball. But it was very good. Yeah, well, I've loved it. I mean, I really have. I've loved getting to know you over the last the last few weeks. You know. Um, oh, uh, there's one here. Uh, you want to say? Oh, yeah. Hi. We want to say hello to Sean, who is signing today. Yes, yeah, so thank you very much, Sean. He's doing an awesome job. Thank you, Sean. Let's all wave at Sean. Thank you, Sean. He's waving back at us. Thank you. <laughs> so it's time to wrap up the show. Maybe we'll just stay here, will we? Um, <laughs> thank you all so much. I've really, really loved uh, working with you over the last few months. You know, it's been lovely. And it's not just you guys. There's there's another five girls. We want to say who they are before um, I thank them. 
Yeah, so there's Anya Murray, Molly Callat, Molly Halligan, Jessica Zhang and Natalia Palma. Yeah, we just couldn't have everybody in here today, so, that, so we had to just we had to choose for that. And of course, we have to thank your teacher. Yes. Yeah, Anne-Marie Anne Kerr. Kerr. She's amazing, Anne-Marie, you're amazing, you're amazing. <laughs> and um, I want to thank all of you, Circa, Kaylee, Camelia, Isabel, Ellie, Ava. I've loved getting to know you and the other five girls. I want to thank SFI for letting this show happen, particularly Michael and Rebecca. I want, to sh I want to thank my partner in crime, Diego, who puts things together, this amazing studio, and everybody at St. Louis. So all we have to do is just... Say goodbye. Let's all wave goodbye and we'll see you on Wednesday. I'm going to be with Regina Monday for more of the same. But for now, the St. Louis Secondary School, it's over. Say goodbye. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>